Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs we're previewing a prototype of Tiny Epic Game of Thrones Ice and Fire expansion. Now, before I get going, two warnings. First of all, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And also, just a fair warning, this expansion, Ice and Fire, really covers in great detail the events of the final chapters of the Game of Thrones saga. And if you have not finished the TV show, or if you're trying to avoid spoilers because you want to wait until the final books come out, well, folks, I'm going to tell you, there's big end of saga spoilers aplenty because the Ice and Fire expansion really devotes itself to the end of the uh, Game of Thrones saga. And um, if you don't want to have big spoilers, uh, you know, for what happens to all the, the, the heroes and villains and all of that, well, you might want to check out my tiny epic Game of Thrones main run through. There's a link for it down in the show notes, or you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen. That shows the base game played competitively, and there's no real significant spoilers there. But there's going to be big spoilers here in um, the expansion uh, gameplay. So just fair warning before we get going. And if you're still with me, then that means welcome back to tiny epic Westeros. Although, it's gotten a little bit less tiny, a little bit more epic, because, folks, now we've got the wall. And the north, uh, beyond the wall, is um, waiting to be explored. In the regular game, this stuff was not here. Also, in the regular game, players faced off against each other in a brutal knife fight to claim the Iron Throne and become the ruler of, you know, the Seven Kingdoms. Now, we are working together. So, in my main run through oh who was it i demonstrated house tyrell the uh, house tyrell working against house lannister to you know you know, to win the whole game in the competitive game but now i put tyrell to the side and i brought in um king of the north john snow and the night's watch uh who are now teaming up with house lannister to stop the night king because like the regular game, it's going to last over six rounds. But in the regular game, at the end of six rounds, whoever scored the most points wins the game. Now, if by the end of the sixth round, we have not defeated the Night King in combat, everybody loses. So we are in a race against time. And where before we were doing everything we could to defeat each other, now we combine our powers to stop the common uh, threat. So how does it work? Well, um, like I said, we're going to play over six rounds. We've still got our regular player board. We start with a hand of cards like we did before, although now we don't have to keep them secret because we're working together, so I don't have to surprise you by draining the coffers or a surprising alliance. I can tell you that I could do these things, so we can kind of coordinate our actions. Um, also, we have a combined pool of money over here. We start in a two-player game with four. Uh, when you're playing competitively, everybody starts with their own separate coffers, but now we've got a combined budget. Uh, we have a combined alliance pool instead of individual ally pools. But otherwise, for the most part, our game is the same. We just share the uh, money. We share our alliances and we share the castles that we have uh, maintained control over. So we're working together on stuff. All right. Um, what else is new? Well, the first thing that happens in every one of the six rounds is we get a Ranger report. And this deck is made as part of setup. Uh, my prototype comes with three cards for round six, five, four, three, two, and one. So you never know exactly what each round is going to do because you create this deck fresh every time. This deck basically tells you where is the Night King and his forces going to spread throughout Westeros. And so you can't really predict them 100%, although you can have kind of guesses. The main thing is the Night King is going to start out in the north and work his way south as the game goes on. So let's look at our first Ranger report. Always in the first round, the Night King does not attack. There's a 33% chance, at least in my prototype, that he might attack in the second round. And then from round three, uh, he will continue to attack relentlessly. But anyway, first turn, we get a break. He's not going to attack. But some White Walkers do appear north of the wall. And we reveal some exploration tokens. This is a whole new thing. You'll notice there's all these exploration tokens in the south and the north. And we need to launch major expeditions to discover what these uh, exploration exploration tokens are, because we're on the hunt for Valerian Steel and Dragonglass. If we cannot find those resources, we cannot win. Uh, Dragonglass will find to the north, Valerian Steel will find to the south, and uh, let's see what happens. So, we have three walkers showing up. It shows where they are. They're, uh, they're, uh, so, in Thin, in Frostfangs, and uh, what's that other one? It's uh, 
uh, something in the river. I can't quite read the name because the word's very far away. And we reveal two explore tokens. These are almost always bad in the north. And yeah, that's bad. We just lost three of our combined. We only have one coin now. No, that's not good. Um, and yo, like I said, most of the time they're bad. Uh, the other one is right here. And oh yeah, baby, that's what we want. That's some dragon glass. We need to get to the north. We need to collect this. Because whenever we get a shard of dragon glass, we actually put it on the Night King board, making him weaker. By default, if we try to engage in combat with the Night King right now, he has a base strength of three, plus he gets to draw a card, plus he has conscription bonuses, plus he has an additional seven plus six plus five. So what is that? Um, 21 plus bonuses. He's unbeatable. We can't possibly muster that kind of combat strength. But once we get our first dragon glass we put it there and now he's lost five of his strength if we can find another one he'll lose six more if we can find all three dragon glass he will lose um what is that uh 18 of his 21 strength and then he'll be very beatable now maybe we won't find all the dragon glass um and the problem is the dragon glass is being guarded by the ice dragon if we ever want to collect this stuff we have to fight the ice dragon for it so um we've got a target we want to get up there that was lucky. I mean, that could have just been two terrible things that happened, but we got lucky. One good thing happened. We got to, we, we still got to find more of that dragon glass. And that was it. Okay. So now the game can begin. And, um, the dice draft, um, is kind of replaced. Well, it's, it's, it's similar to the way it works a competitive game. Just as a reminder, in case you did not watch the main run-through, the way the uh, dice work, because this is a dice worker placement game at its heart of hearts, all five dice are rolled in a competitive game, and then in reverse turn order, players draft the dice they want, because that'll be an action that they get to trigger over the course of the game, um, and they trigger those actions by putting them on these worker placement spots and triggering bonus actions. So if I had this die, it's for events, and I put it here, I would get to whisper, and then I would get to trigger trigger an event. I would get to whisper, but all players, myself and everybody else, would get to trigger an event. And so we roll them all, and there's a reverse draft to grab them. That's competitive. In the cooperative game, just um, every player gets one die and rolls it for themselves. So the Lannisters there, they got to recruit. Um, but whoever is the lead player, whoever um, is the hand of the king, they get to roll two dice. All right, so I rolled sale and plot. And like in the competitive game, there are two extra dice rolled that kind of replicate a, th a third and a fourth player. That these will be extra actions. This is, a, you know... I'm going to do an action, and everybody gets to follow me. Then player two is going to get to do an action, everybody follows. And then we get to follow the third and the fourth die as if they were a third and fourth player. That's pretty much... That is the structure of how a multiplayer game works in the competitive. Uh, it's just that we do it via drafting. Everybody grabs the dice they want because we're competing. Now we just get to roll them all, and then we work together to do the best stuff. So, I am up. I can either trigger a sale action or a plotting action plotting action. Plus, in addition to that, I can recruit, march, sail, whisper, plot, or event. So I could do plot and plot if I wanted to. Um, and remember, after I've done this action and then my die, my teammate will also get to do the bonus action. We'll get to follow the die action. So we need to work that out. We need to... Do, I mean, often in the competitive game, you're trying to figure out a die action that is not good for your opponent. Oh, you don't really have anybody to... Uh, you don't have enough money to recruit. Now's a good time for me to recruit because you can't follow me. Now we want to time our stuff together because we're fighting together. So anyway, what do I want to do? Well... We've got a problem. We're almost broke. In the competitive game, everybody has their own coffer of money, but now we have a shared coffer, and we're down to one. But it just so happens, in my starting hand of cards, I've got drain the coffers. If I trigger this via an event, we could get combined six gold. Although, we have to have zero. So I need to spend some money right now. I need to spend some money so I can make some money. But to be able to do this, I would have to trigger an event. No! And here's the problem. I didn't roll an event card. Say I trigger... I mean, I could... I could do this and say, hey, I'm going to trigger an event, but I would... Or I, I could plot. This would let me... Plotting would let me spend our last coin, right? And then, hey, I do the event, but it doesn't work that way. First, I have to do the event, and then I have to plot. So I wouldn't be able to play this card to get our money back. But, um, 
And Jamie over here, my teammate, they did not roll the um, event die either. And neither... Oh, but we do. We do have an event. We could follow this event. So I'd be able to do it for player three. I'd be able to play this event. So um, we just have to make sure that if I burn all our cash that Jamie doesn't spend any money um, so that we can trigger this event later on so I can get the money. Although, remember, every uh, house has their own power. The Lannister's special power is they can always set a die to the event phase. So Jamie could force this recruit to be an event if Jamie wants. So anyway, um, our, now I don't have to play this, but I mean, you know, the fact that we just burned through all our cash and this is a way to get it back. I just wish this was in Jamie's hand. It would be, this would be a better timed card um, but so I've got aggressive arbitration, got the Kingslayer. Ooh, surprising alliance. This is a new card. You can tell because it's got the ice and fire logo. This is a really cool event to do. Uh, pay one coin. So this could be the last coin we pay uh, to grab a power token from each of the unaligned houses and randomly get two of those to join us. Normally, to get two unaligned houses, it would cost us two coins. This only costs one, but we don't have control over who joins us. And who could join us? Well, like in the main run-through I did, hey, there's House Aaron again. They're always around, no matter what, always ready to help. And House Tully and the Starks are on deck, ready to help again. But I swapped out uh, the Greyjoys for the Targaryens. And if we could recruit the Targaryens, that means we get Daenerys' dragons on our side. I mean, of course, um, the Targaryens could have been, this could have been, um, you know, the Night's Watch teaming up with the Targaryens. Once you have this expansion, you've got 10 different houses you can combine uh, in any number of ways. But I just figured, what the heck, let's have the Targaryens be a potential ally and uh, Jon Snow being one of the active players. Right. So I kind of want to do that event to spend the last buck. Right. But again, I... So I could. I could trigger an event and I could plot. But if I trigger this event and spend... Then I don't have any money to plot. So what would I want to do? If I'm going to trigger this event to... Um, you know what? I think I know what I'm doing. I am going to trigger an event and then set sail. That's my plan. Okay. And now, I should really confer with all of my teammates because uh, Jamie Lannister might say, I don't particularly want to sail right now, but here's the deal. I do because, remember how I was talking about um, setting up this ranger deck? Uh, there, pick a random round two, three, four, five, and six. In the prototype I've got, I don't know if this is going to be true for the final game, but I think it is. There are three round two cards. Uh, the cards either say, don't attack, Attack north of the wall in, what's it, Caster, Craster's Keep, or attack Castle Black. And if this, at the beginning of round two, is attack Castle Black, the Night King is going to come in and rickroll us. I am not powerful enough. So actually, at this point, I kind of want to retreat. And there's no better way to get out of Dodge than to set sail and head south. Now, I can't sail north yet because we cannot move north of the wall, either by marching or by sailing, until the uh, Night King has attacked south of the wall. Then the wall goes away, and, um, and then the game really starts. And that's probably going to happen next round. So I am thinking it makes sense for me to get out of here. But does my teammate want to take advantage of a sail action as well? I mean, you might as well. I mean, they're all the way down here in Casterly Rock. There are better places they could go, I think. So let's do that. And they say, okay, yeah, that's fine. I understand why you want to get away because, because Jon Snow, you know nothing, Jon Snow. And like, I know I need to get out of here. All right, so first of all, I'm going to trigger an event and it is going to be a surprising alliance. We are going to pay our last communal coin. We are going to grab one from each of the unaligned houses and two of them are going to join our combined alliance. In the competitive game, everybody has their own separate alliances, but now we have a shared alliance. And I am hoping for Targaryen. We want some dragons on our side. Here we go. Boom. And Danny joins us. And so do the Starks. Okay, that is that would be my preferred option. Nice. Now, just like the competitive game, they won't actually join until we've got two of their tokens in our alliance. But the nice thing about being allied with the Starks, they're already up in the north. Uh, they've already got three troops up here at Winterfell. So if, um, you know, because the White Walkers are going to be in the north before the south, getting them on site faster is going to be a big help. And then here's the Targaryens down here and getting their dragons, getting their dragon eggs and all that going. Okay, cool. So first I did an event. And it worked out very well. Now we're going to set sail, which means 
Um, I pick one of my groups in one of the domains I control. This card is gone. It goes to a discard pile. And I can move up to two cards away. Um, and, you know, later on, I'd be able to sail north. But right now, I could sail to any of these regions in the second or the third. And this is literally just to get away in case... I mean, now, and here's the deal. If I abandon Castle Black then we do not have control over Castle Black anymore. And that's another interesting thing, too. Remember, in the multiplayer game, if somebody controls three castles, they can take King's Landing. They can control King's Landing, which is a huge source of power. In this combined game, we have to have a combined six castles. Each of us has to have, um, you know, uh, go... go, go chipped in. So if we've got six castles between us, and if I run away, I'm giving one of those castles up. But the reality is, I mean, there's a one in three chance that this castle is going to get destroyed anyway, and I might as well not lose troops at the same time. So we are abandoning. Where am I going to go? Well, here's the deal. I think I will... I'm not going to go too far south. I'll just come down here to the three sisters. Boom. Okay. So I, I won't have to travel too far. So this is going to increase our income at the uh, end of the round. So that's good because we're in a five. And you will notice there's an exploration token. So you might think, oh, hey, I just moved here. I get to find out? No. To be able to launch these uh, expeditions to get these exploration tokens, I have to move here with three units. I just moved here with two. So I can't get this yet. So I'm going to have to recruit... Um, but maybe there'll be some recruiting, and then I get to find out what this is. And maybe it's some Valerian Steel, which will help us fight the White Walkers. So anyway, so that was it for me. I triggered an event, um, which got us a couple of uh, recruits, and then I sailed to safety. Right, now, before my teammate goes, after every player goes, the Night King goes. And what they're going to do is they're going to evoke fear. Now, I know it talks about it um, someplace on one of these cards. It describes how it works. But basically, after every player's turn, we draw a random card. And the Night King is going to put the fear into our unaligned houses and um, fight against us for control of them. We're trying to get control so we can get you know their powers, their troops, and all that. The Night King is, is terrifying these so that they will not fight with us to save Westeros. So this is basically like a plotting thing for them. And, oh, that is bad news. If this had been the uh, banner of the Starks or the Tullys or the Aarons or the Targaryens, well, then that just means the Targaryens, the Starks, the Tullys, or the uh, Aarons would just get a little bit more afraid. But this is me, and this is a flag, the uh, the Tyrells. It's not in the game. So for both of these, um, since they aren't the uh, non-allied houses, it's going to be... Two White Walkers show up in the pool. And the more White Walkers in the pool, the worse it is. That's the, I mean, that is the worst thing it could have been. Thanks, loyal companion. Uh, I guess they were loyal to the Night King that time. All right, so anyway, so that was the Night King taking a turn. Finally, it is Jamie's turn. And um, I haven't even looked at Jamie's cards yet. So Jamie... Cannot trigger an event, because I've blocked that space. But remember, Jamie could turn this recruit into an event if they want... By the way, I forgot to mention um, the uh, Night's Watch special powers set a die to any face that hasn't been used yet. So that's an interesting twist on the way the other houses work. But anyway, so um, if Jamie triggers an event, then I, uh, you know, after Jamie goes, can follow on that event and, um, you know, turns that into an event and get us all our money back. But he doesn't have to because I can just wait until this event happens. But the problem is... If Jamie doesn't turn this into an event, this is a recruit action, and Jamie has no money to recruit, so that's a waste. So, Jamie is not excited about that. But, what Jamie could do is, Jamie could turn this into an event using the Lannister power, and then whisper, right? So, first of all, whispering means discard cards to turn them into money. And um, then Jamie could trigger an event, spend that money on one of these events, because I'm sure one of them must uh, need some money. And then when we're broke again, after Jamie's event burns all our money, I could do an event and drain the coffers to get our ca cash back. So that would be a very nice combo. But like I said, I haven't looked at Jamie's cards yet. So, um, But a human player would have by now. We would have been um, working on all of this as we went. Let's just go on ahead and take a look and see what Jamie's got up his sleeve. Again, we've got another new card, Stash of Dragonglass. Oh. Well, that's not the greatest Dragonglass. It doesn't give us Dragonglass that we need for the Night King, but it does make us tougher in a fight. So that is interesting, especially because 
looking at this now, I didn't realize Jamie doesn't have any events that would actually spend money. Uh, it would, um, so the problem is, if he whispers to get some money, he won't then spend it. He would make money. And we need, after he's done, for us to be broke. Oh, but you know what? Oh, that is interesting. Should I do that? First of all, one thing I forgot, folks. Always watch the Klingon subtitles turned on because in everything I've done so far, I forgot. Hey, after I sailed, Jamie had the opportunity to sail as well if Jamie had wanted to. They could have stayed at Cashley Lock or, or Cashley Rock or they could have moved out. Did they want to sail someplace? Yeah, I think he will. I think he will have sailed up to uh, up here to the uh, the the rules the riles the the rocks I'm quite I can't such a small font it's tiny font tiny epic font anyway so he sailed up there leaving somebody behind so we would not lose control of Castle Lock like um oh did I yeah uh, we did lose control of um Castle Black so he did sail up there on my turn and now I think he is going to turn this into an event right or, wait no it was recruit wasn't it. No, yeah, yeah. He's just going to leave it as recruit. We'll let this event happen. He's going to whisper and then recruit. He's going to whisper to make some money and then spend that money to recruit so that when we get to this event, we'll be broke and I can drain the coffers. So um, that means after this recruit, recruiting means he can get two. So that means we have to give up two cards to make two, two recruits. So I think this dragon glass is going to be very, very nice. Which one other of these other ones do we get rid of? Um... Choose a domain except for King's Landing. And this is a new card again. Uh, adjacent to the domain you control. Return another place. Wow, this just lets you instantly wipe out. Now, this is great in a multiplayer game because you can just instantly wipe out an opponent's thing. You can instantly wipe out a White Walker with that. I think I want to hold on to that. Loyal Squire. Gain two and one unit for free. Placing That's nice too. All right, I like both those. All those. So we're going to get rid of the Faith Militant. And, well, no, no, we're not going to get rid of Jamie Lannister. Of course, going to keep that card. So, we're going to discard Faith Militant. And, oof. I guess Stash, I mean, because this is a real gamble. Yes, it lets you draw an extra card in combat. Um, draw the top card. You know, you play a card to get some strength in and you draw a card. But, um, you know, who knows if you end up drawing a thing you can't afford. So, it's not a guarantee. We're going to get rid of that. So, that um, that whispering, draw, discarding those two cards, got us combined two coins. But then Jamie's going to spend them all to make two recruits. And, um, boom, boom. Ooh, you know what? If he had brought this one along, we would get to explore. Let's say he did bring everybody along. We'll get Casualty Rock back later. I mean, it's interesting. In the multiplayer game, you don't want to just give up locations like this willy-nilly. But we can afford to give up a castle. We'll get it back. So he moved up here with all of his troops. And because he is now sitting with... um, Oh, wait, no. Actually, oh, he doesn't have to do this. Right? Yeah, he's got three units. Himself and these two units. That's the three he needs. And let's see what we find. Oh, folks, we found some Valerian steel. And that just made the White Walkers more um, weak or weaker, easier to fight. It's kind of the same thing as I talked about with the Night King. Um, White Walkers, by default, have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus a blind draw. Now, they've got one, two, three, four, five, plus a blind draw. White Walkers just got easier to fight because we found some Valerian steel. Just like the TV show and the books, I assume. Anyway, so that's it. We have discovered one thing. And, um, you know, if we end our around there, that's making us some more money. We did give up Castle Rock. We are now a million miles away from taking King, uh, you know, the Iron Throne and King's Landing because we have no castles. But I, I, no, no, actually, no, we do. We still have one because Jamie did not forsake Casterly Rock like uh, Jon Snow did. Okay, so Jamie is now down to uh, just two cards plus his own card in his hand. Fine and dandy. And uh, now, I could recruit. But here's the problem. Uh, yes! You know what? Okay, Jamie got rid of one more card. Or did he get rid of both? Ugh, I'll get rid of both of these. So Jamie actually made two more bucks. So Jamie actually made four coins, right? And gave up some really good cards. But the interesting thing is, don't forget, after Jamie gave up all four of his cards, then Whispering says, refill your hand. So he got four new ones. One, two, three, four. I'm sure those are all very nice too. Jamie gave up everything to get four. He then, um, that was during the Whispering. He then spent two to recruit. And now I get to follow. I get to recruit as well. I will also recruit two. Um, although I've got a problem. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have left this back home 
Oh, but he's just going to get destroyed anyway. Urgh. All right, hold on a second. Um, because I... Wait. Ooh. No, we don't have any allies yet. So I can't recruit two people. I can only recruit one. Uh, because remember, there's uh, no more than three units in a given zone. Right, uh, from one player, so you know, and then one allied, uh, you know, a allied house as well. So I can't recruit the other one. So that meant Jamie had to hold on to one card, and I think he will have held on to that loyal squire because that was a pretty nice one. All right, so Jamie made three. He recruited two himself, and then I recruited one by following him. So I got to explore this. And it's more Valerian Steel! Wow. Okay, you know what, folks? You've already seen Valerian Steel. I want you to see something else. Let's just say it was this. In no, my gosh, it's... All right. All right. Okay. No! It's a coin! You know what? Let's just live with the Valerian Steel. Let's just say it was Valerian Steel we found. Because if it's a coin, that ruins everything. All right, so we found more Valerian Steel. The White Walkers have gotten even weaker. But you can see there's other kinds of bonuses we could find as well. And finding a coin would have been terrible. Um, because anyway, so... Uh, he's did. He did his whispering, gave up three cards, made some money, and then both of us used it to recruit. And we're broke again. He recruited two, I recruited one. Now, we move on to this. We can both follow and do an event. In turn order, it'll be me first, and I will... Where to go? I will play this event to drain the coffers, getting us back up to six. Nice. That was exactly what we wanted. And now Jamie's got some new cards. Could trigger another event. And now we're not trying to be so cheap. So, what is Jamie going to trigger? And wow, none of these are good right now. These are all terribly timed. Maybe Jamie is not going to trigger one of these. We could start a fight. I mean, so this one isn't good because um, both of our heroes are recruited. We have not gotten any allies yet to recruit ally heroes for free. That would be awesome if we already had an ally, but we don't have them yet. We don't. Um, right, the Force March could uh, move really far and get plus two in battle. So, that's something... But he doesn't really have any good battle cards to help him in that fight. And really, the only people we could fight, because there's no White Walkers yet. Why does he have nothing but attack cards? Now, we could say, you know what, we can use plotting to get allies, right? Or we could attack them. And if we beat them, like if we beat the Tullys, we'll start recruiting them that way too. So we could um, have a pretty good shot at beating these, but then we're just taking out units we want to recruit later. And the problem is the Loyal Squire, I'd like the coins, and the one unit for free, placing it in the main of a hero you control, can't put a unit there. But, okay, he'll do it anyway. He'll place this, and he'll only do half of it. We'll get the two coins, so now we're up to eight, but he should be able to get a uh, recruit a unit for free, which normally would cost two, uh, but he can't put it in the region he's in, because that's already full. So, um, we only got half of that, but still, it was pretty good. And now the last thing is, we all have the opportunity to force a sale. Right. And I think we're both going to sail because we both have three units. And if we sail, we can explore more of these areas. So uh, let's have Jamie sail south. One, two, come over here to Old Town where we discover that coin. Um, so we're almost full. All righty. And uh, John, where will you sail, John? Uh, John will just sail... Well, we can't do King's Landing yet because we don't have enough castles. Um, let's go on ahead and just sail up to uh, Hornwood. Sail up here. And because, again, in three, we discover another one. And, hey, it's two coins. Ah, see, now here's a problem. Now, we have too much money, and the money we're going to make, we can't... We've got too much money. I sure... Well, no, right, so wasted one of these coins, and the income we're going to get, we're wasting too. Oh, folks, all this trouble, and then we're, we're too freaking rich. We're too rich. Should I have... You know what? No. Yeah. I, we already have way too much money. One, two, three. We're not going to go and get these things knowing that we don't need this cash. Right? That's not what we're going to do. We're going to go get some freaking castles. That's what we're going to do. All right. So, uh, first of all, it should have been John first. John is just going to sail down to Storm's End, let's say, and get a second castle. That's what we should be focusing on right now. And Jamie... Oh, but John will leave one troop in the Three Sisters to make money. Jamie, who was, where was he? Uh, it was it the, the real, the rolls, uh, is going to sail, leave one there, and is going to sail to, right, so it was up here, one, two, he's going to sail down to uh, Starfall, 
So now we've got three of the six castles we need. So that's what that that made more sense rather than risking getting overloaded with cash. So hey, we've got three of the six castles we need. Hurrah! We held on to those money making areas, and that was it. Oh wait, although one more thing. Um, before we did these, before we did this event and that, uh, at, at the end of James' turn, there's a reminder right here. Remember, Jamie whispered and then recruited, and I recruited. Then we were supposed to evoke fear. That's what that little symbol is. So we should have evoked fear, which said, hey, Targaryens get more afraid. They go to the fear pool, and the Night Watch goes as well, uh, which, uh, you know, because uh, because of the Night Watch on my leadership, they'll never go to the fear pool, and instead, that means we get another freaking White Walker in the fear pool. Then, um, we, we got to do these extra follows, and now we have finished the first round. Oh my gosh, folks, it's so big, so tiny, and yet epic. So first of all, like the regular competitive game, um, we are going to... Uh, check alliances. And uh, need, we did not finish our alliances. We haven't allied with the Targaryens or the Starks yet. But before we would even get those, if we had to, we look up here to the Fear Pool. For every two White Walkers that are up there, the um, Night King steals one of ours. So since there's three, and then, they, and then they go back home. So since there was three, that means they're going to steal one. They're going to steal our Targaryen or they're going to steal our Stark. Not happy about that. And if they take the Targaryen, that's two Targaryens, which means the Targaryens will be terrified and they will not help us at all. So that's no good. So we'll have them steal a Stark. So now the Starks and the Targaryens are getting afraid. They're not terrified yet. They can still be recruited. Um, but and we've still got one. So we need another Targaryen to uh, you know get them to get Danny and her dragons to join the fight. So that's been resolved. Now we do our taxes. And things are a little bit different. In the regular game, we get taxes for all the you know the uh, fiefdoms we control, plus for all the uh, coins that are uncovered. So normally we'd get one, two, three, but we don't get these coins in the cooperative game. We do get the cards. So each of us gets one card, right? So that's cool, and that's good because we had just used some events. So we need some more cards for events and stuff like that. So we each, uh, all right. We, so we we got two cards as a group, but we don't get those coins. But we do get coins from the board. So that is one, two, just two, right? Because we took those castles. So we get two more coins, but that's okay because I made most of the money already. So we get we get a little bit of taxation. We get some more cards. But the Night King gets some stuff during uh, taxes as well. Basically, the Night King scores a point for every White Walker on the board. So the Night King just scored three points. And remember, if we don't stay ahead of the Night King in turn of points, we can't fight him. And he, as long as those White Walkers stay on the board, his strength is growing. And if it goes above our morale. So as they come up, we have to take them out. And we will be taking them out sooner than later. But anyway, I think that's it. All righty. Of course, if we were at the end of round three or five, we would also score for our castles as well. So that'd be another way we could stay ahead of him as we keep our castles under control and all of that. But we have finished the first of six rounds, folks. And uh, so we get our dice back and uh, we see what um, round two's ranger report. Okay, so um, that's not good. The White Walkers from the Ranger Ports are always going to be up north. So, a second one would appear here. And if a second one can't appear here, because there's only one per region, gets a point. Got a point for that. Got a point for that one. Has almost caught up with us. A new one appears up there where the Dragon Glass is. And, uh, fine. So... Alrighty, so he's almost caught up with us on points. And we reveal this one. And it's another White Walker right there. And since there's already one there, can't he is now caught up with us on points? We got to get up there and take those White Walkers out. And um, it says he did it. Okay, I was right to run, folks. The Night King attacks Castle Black. And if I had been there, there's no two ways about it. I would have gotten obliterated. With his default strength of 21, I couldn't come close to beating that. So I would have lost a troop. We would have been forced to retreat. It would have been a waste of time. So discretion was the better part of valor. Jon Snow, you know something. Um, again, there was a 1 in 3 chance of that, but it's the right thing to do. So anyway, when the Night King moves into a place with a castle, he destroys the castle. This castle, Castle Black, will not be repaired. If, you, if we own this territory, it still provides plus one defense, but we can never claim it again and put it on our board to try, I mean, because the Castle Black 
is no more. The invading forces of the Night King have destroyed it. And he would have destroyed me if I had not run away. Now, there's more that happens. And it's bad news. He puts more White Walkers. He puts a White Walker where he is and one in every adjacent region. Boom, boom, boom. And now that he's crossed the line, the wall is down and it's replaced by his ice dragon. Okay, so now, folks, we have stuff to fight. Because if we leave all these White Walkers on the board, then at the end of the round, he just scores more and more points. And if he's ahead of us on points, we can't fight him. And plus, as we're destroying these things, we're scoring points. And fighting them is the same as fighting in the regular game. You saw fights in the main run-through. Uh, the White Walkers now have one, two, three, four. They have a base of four plus whatever they draw. So they're definitely beatable. It's just a question of how much time are we going to spend fighting them versus searching for more stuff, you know, getting more castles so we can get the uh, Iron Throne and recruiting and using events and all the rest of the stuff. The game has now really started. We're going to roll our dice. I've got two. Um, Jamie's got one. And then we've got two that will come at the end. That's like players three and four again. So Jamie's going to trigger a recruit. I'm going to trigger a recruit and a march. We're going to have an event and a whisper at the end of the round that we could do. And we've got a whole bunch of white walkers. We can also now move up north. And we, if we move up with a group of three, we can reveal what these are. And remember, this is where we find the uh, dragon glass that we need. So we need to come up here. When we come up here, we'll have to fight this thing. But then, if we don't lose any troops, we'll be able to weaken the Night King, as an example. Um, although, that's very far away. Because so we can't sail all the way around. So, Jamie's down here. It'd be one, two, three. It'd be two sailing actions to make it all the way up there for Jamie. Oh, where is uh, Jon Snow? Where are you, Jon Snow? Oh, Jon Snow. One, two, three. Yeah. So, both of us, we're too far away to sail up there right now. But... We could just um, start trying to fight these ones that have moved in. Now, we do not want to fight the... Uh, you know, in the next round, this is going to say he's going to move somewhere further south. And um, probably destroy another castle, spawn more of those White Walkers, and create more problems for us as we try to plot as the best we can. So what have I got? I've got my own power, which is very, very good. So maybe I should do that. How about if we start out... Um, with, well, first of all, don't forget my special power is, uh, I can, oh, by the way, oh, the hand of the, the, the hand of the king should have changed hands as well. So I'm not going first. Jamie's going first. If I were going first though, I probably would trigger the, um, my own power to sail up to take out one of these white walkers because if I beat them with my own power, I would get an additional point so we could stay ahead of the white king and or the night king and start taking out white walkers. That's probably what I'd do. I might still do that, but right now Jamie is up first because the uh, hand changed hands to him. So what has he got? Well, he's got his own special power if we want to trigger events. Remember, he can always make an event happen no matter what his die is because that's what the Lannisters do. But to be honest, we need to we need to plot more. Oh, and by the way, actually, I'm sorry. It should have been Jamie. Jamie rolled these two dice. I rolled the one die. Right, okay. We need to be plotting more. Because if we plot one more time, at the end of this round, we can get Daenerys on our side. And then we can start hatching dragon eggs. So, does Jamie have any plotting that would let us do that? Uh, yes, he does. Um, although we'd only get to, yeah, but that is, you know, if we give up the unsullied, if we plot with this, that's going to get Daenerys on our side by the end of the round and we'll get her hero card, which will definitely help a lot. And, uh, we will be able to start using dragons and all of her troops will become our troops. So Jamie, of course, didn't get a chance to plot, but he could, um, you know, he could activate plot off of there. And then recruit. We have enough money to recruit a lot of troops now. So that's interesting. Or he could march. I mean, he's way south. We need to start marching north. How did I get so far south? Oh, because we did all those bonus sails. And now we don't have any sailing options to go back north. We sailed too far south. And now the winds are against us, I guess. Hmm. You know what? I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. I think he'll march and plot, right? Okay, so that's what he's going to do. First of all, the plotting. He will play this card. Um, this, I mean, oh, what's it? Uh, the uh, is that Baratheon? No, 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 that's Martell. That doesn't do us any good. But this, he spends one coin 
to get one more power token. We have now, at the end of the round, because we've got two of these um, Targaryens, they will, you know, Danny will join us in the fight. And now he gets to march. He's going to leave this troop down here so we can hold on to this. And he will go one, two to come up here to the Shield Islands. Or does he go one? Where does he go? One, two? Do we, do we want to make money? No, we have enough money. He's going to go... One, two, to come up here to the Reach. He's starting to work his way back up. Now, um, because he ends here, he immediately... Although, 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 if he comes up here, it's making money. And here's the thing. On my turn, I could trigger a Recruit, which means he could Recruit and get this. And if it's more Valerian Steel, it's going to make it even easier to find the white, fight the White Walkers. But instead, if he comes up here to the Reach, as he's working his way back north, we have another castle. We're getting one step closer to the Iron Throne, which will really help us go overload and start recruiting all of these um, houses. So I think that makes sense. So that was it. And now I get to march as well, uh, if I want to. Right. And so it's just me and my little buddy. Or, you know, this little buddy down here could march all by himself. I just pick one area and, um, you know, with everybody I control and uh, march, march, march. What would I do? Um... Hmm. Unfortunately, again, we're so far south. <sighs> if I march in here, since they're not our allies yet, then we'd uh, end up losing. I do not have enough people, but how about... I, I'm going to start marching my way back up as well. I will go one, two, and I'll end up at um, Ashmark. Okay, so that was it. So we both marched. That was Jamie's turn. Then... Um, Fear is evoked. The Aaron house and... Oops, not, or goes on, not ours. goes on theirs. And a White Walker shows up into the Fear Pool. Remember, if two White Walkers, that means they'll steal another one from us. Not great. Okay, now it's my turn. Right. And I am going to recruit. Uh, when I recruit for myself, that will give me more so I can find out whatever this is. Jamie will get to recruit as well. Because Jamie's got nobody with him. So that's good. But what else am I going to do? Although, remember, it doesn't have to be Recruit. I can change this into anything that hasn't been used yet. But, remember, what I really wanted to do was set sail and uh, get in some trouble. Right? Because I did have... I was talking about that. Taking out... Yeah, the uh, yeah, using my own power. Hmm. Ah. Oh, I kind of like this. I kind of like the Kingslayer. How about I do that? How about... I leave this alone because we need to recruit more troops, right? I go for uh, an event. The event is I will play the Kingslayer. This says we have to lose a point. And that's not good. We've just dropped below. But now, um, right, can re destroy one unit. Could be the hero, although um, can't be the Night King. I think the Night King is immune from this. Uh, from the player with the highest score. That's the Night King. The Night King has a higher score than us. So we can just immediately take out any White Walker we want anywhere. So... I'm kind of inclined to take out this one that's guarding the dragon glass. So I will just take this one out instantly. Um, right. And so that means they're not getting as many points. The dragon glass is unguarded. And uh, that was my event I triggered. And now we are going to recruit. I am going to spend... I'm going to recruit two. That's going to cost me three. One, two, three. No, I'm only going to recruit two. Because I only have room, right? So I'm going to recruit. And that means I discover this. And, oh, the Three-Eyed Raven. What that means is, it's a little late now. We get to find out what the next Ranger report is early. So we could maybe do stuff about it. And actually, boy, I am glad I took out that White Walker because another one is going to spawn there. And if I hadn't taken it out, that would have been another point for the uh, Night King. All right. So we know that's coming. We also know the Night King's next target is going to be the Airy, which means he's going to fight. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, if only I'd had this information sooner. Because it would be... it would No, 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 no. no. Yeah, I mean, these they're just going to get wiped out. And the castle's going to get destroyed. But here's the other thing. The castle's, you know, next round, this is where they're going to go. They're going to wipe out everybody. One of them will get taken, which means the errands will fall into terror and won't help us anymore. The other ones will retreat. The castle will get destroyed. And when they attack here, White Walkers will appear all around the place, which means... Um, I'm about to have a fight with the White Walkers. And so will Targaryens. Targaryens at the end of at round three are going to be on our team. So, 
Oh, interesting. Interesting. So that's going to happen. We're going to have some fights with White Walkers. Um, we're going to get hit over there and we can see it coming. Again, it would have been nicer to know that while we were still doing stuff. Right? So anyway, so I recruited... Um, I could recruit um, two. I could recruit one more. So I think I will spend. Uh, but I can't give him to John. But I could put it someplace else. I could put it up here in the three sisters. Because remember, I now know there's about to be a White Walker here. So it's a good thing that I recruited right there. So now that I'll have two troops to fight against the White Walkers and maybe stop this White Walker from spawning and maybe give us a point for the win of the fight because we can see that's coming. So that was definitely worth it. And now Jamie also gets to recruit. And uh, Jamie, it's going to cost four, one, two, three, four, to get two more Lannisters. And Jamie will just put them both himself so he can run around with them. All right. So we um, did all that recruiting after my event of the Kingslayer. Right. And then, now this is where bad news might happen. Please, 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 please. Oh, no. Right. This is um, our, uh, the Tyrells are not in the game, which means another White Walker, which means they're going to steal one of these. And because we don't have any other alliances, how did that happen? How did that happen? Oh, it's because. So we're going to lose the Targaryens. We're there. Janie's not going to join us after all. No. Oh, that is bad news. That is bad news. Okay, so now we can each of us can trigger an event, and then each of us can whisper to make some money. All right, is there anything we can do? Is there anything we can do? I would like to do an event that gets us another Targaryen so we can still... Right, so, um, you know, Jamie is first. What event is Jamie going to do? Ah, uh, they're all fighting, aren't they? Okay, I think it's time to call in Littlefinger. Right, so Jamie is going to call in the influence of Littlefinger. Return one power token from your ally pool. Because we're not going to get the Targaryens anyway, because of the scary White Walkers, we're just going to return them, return one, and that lets us get two from a different pool. So, that means right now, we can get the Aarons, the Tullys, or the Starks. And we have a lot of White Walkers to clean up there, so let's grab two Starks. Although, we could get the Aarons right now. And, um... That means when the fight happens, because we know the fight's going to happen, because they'd be with us, we could help them. So, am I going to take two errands? But I mean, or am I going to take Starks or am I going to take the Tullys? The Tullys or the Starks? Ugh. All right, Littlefinger, who should we recruit now that we've given up on Danny Targaryen? Actually, I think my inclination is to do the Tullys, because the Tullys are the one family, that one house that has not gotten scared of the White Walkers yet. So, at the end of this round, we will get Hooster Tully on our side. Thanks, Littlefinger. So, that was Jamie's event, and now my event. What can I do? Hmm. I think it's time for Jon Snow to show why he's the King of the North. This is the one I'm going to play. Okay. So, perform a march or a sail with a hero I control in any units uh, to start a battle. And if I win the battle, get an additional point. So, where are you, Jon Snow? Jon Snow is right here. So, um, we are going to sail. We're going to set sail north. We are going to land in Shadow Tower. And we are going to fight some White Walkers. All right. Plus, we'll get another Explorer bonus afterwards. So, it's time for a fight. And also, if we win this fight, we'll get and it, we'll get two points instead of one to catch back up. So, that's, uh, that is it. But no, it's not! Because I'm too broke! If I had two coins... I could play this. That would add four because of the crushing siege. And so it'd be four, five, six, seven, eight up against one, two, three, four, plus whatever they drew. It'd be a pretty safe bet that we would take that White Walker out. But I don't have the money, honey. Shoot, I am not going to do that. I am not going to do that. Urgh. The White Walker, we, we don't have enough Valerian steel for me to take them without having the money to throw extra offense into the fight. Shoot, shoot, shoot the boot. Shoot the boot, the boot. Um, Drat. So I don't think there's any of these I can do very well. Um, you know, this aggressive arbitration, I could do this. Uh, you know, giving up a power token. We still have one Targaryen um, to, into another player's ally pool. Oh, that's interesting. So we'd, uh, I'd take it from mine and give it to, But, I mean, we have a shared one. So we just stay there. So this is basically... Oh, this is a recruit. Yeah, okay. 
I'm going to do some aggressive arbitration. Place a power token from my ally pool into another player's, which in a couple of games, I'd be giving somebody one of my people that I probably don't care about, but here, it just stays in the family, but then get to perform a recruitment for free. So yeah, I'll recruit. I'll go on ahead and do a recruitment for free. Let's do that. Uh, get two units, and where am I going to put them? I'll go on ahead and put them. Ah, I'm not spread. So I can put one here, but I can't put a third one here, and I don't have any other units any place. So I could only get one of them, unfortunately. But hey, it was still a free. Uh, I saved a couple of bucks, got somebody else on the board. They're going to be ready for that uh, fight that's coming. And now the last thing we can both whisper. I will get rid of my crushing siege to make us one buck and then draw back one, two, three, four. And I guess Jamie will get rid of both of his to get us two bucks back and get right one, two, three, four. So we're back in the cash. All righty. So we've dealt with those. And now it's the end of the second of six rounds. And so because there's two white walkers in the fear pool, we lose another one. And the Targaryens fall into pure terror. Boom. It's as if they definitely recruited. It just means um, that um, if we try to fight them now, they actually will fight even stronger against us than they normally would. That is a bummer. Um, but, you know, that's just uh, that's the Night King focused on them. Okay. So, uh, and meanwhile, we have got House Tully. Um, so we've suddenly just gotten these three units on the board. We can now recruit Hooster Tully um, to, our, to our fight. So a good way to start getting more allies faster. So that's pretty nice. Well, we'd have to recruit him too. Plus, he's another hero who could be on the board. And um, we get to tax. And where, where, where are we? So we get um, one. And uh, where else? Where else? Uh, the Reach is, has money, right? No, that's a castle. All right. So, all right. One, two, three. We get three coins. One, two, three. From our holdings. We don't get coins from these, but we do get more cards. Although that's going to put us over our limit, so we're going to have to discard some. All right, one, two, three. So I'll have to worry about that. So I've got to figure out what are the ideal cards to do, which I'm not going to do right now. I'm not going to make you watch me do that because that would be, that would take me a while. But here's the painful part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So the Night King is way too powerful. We cannot fight him. But again, we, this is only this round two. We have till six rounds. And we're going to start doing fights. We're going to start um, you know, scoring points every time we fight those White Walkers. And, and as long as we keep those White Walkers down, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we move on to round three. This happens. Uh, some White Walkers appear up north. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Some more stuff gets revealed. Actually, uh, yeah. So this gets revealed, which is it's another White White Walker, and um, this one gets revealed, and it's another White Walker. So there's what five White Walkers just showed up, right? One, two, and where were the other ones? Uh, no, there's already one there, so he gets a point. Three, four, five. <laughs> Jeez, Louise! Oh my gosh, things are getting out of control very quickly. But we got a lot of game to get up there and start fighting. And we're now really starting to build up our troops so we could sail up there and take out the White Walkers, um, which will be getting us points and all the rest of it. But more importantly, the Night King comes down here. And boom, um, our buddies cannot put up a fight, can't beat um, you know this. Uh, so one of them, so now... House Aaron, at the end of the round, House Aaron will fall into terror as well. These other ones retreat to the safest place they can. So I think the nearest unoccupied fife is just a little bit north up at White Harbor. So they just ran away to White Harbor. This castle just got destroyed, so we can never use it to take the Iron Throne. But most importantly, here we go. Boom. Boom. They're going to fight Targaryens. Uh, they're trying to, all right. And, um, oh my gosh, there's not enough. So they're going to fight us. And for the one that can't fit, uh, he gets another point. So now my troops are going to fight this white Walker. Um, the white Walker has a one, two, three, four, right? Plus whatever this says, I've got one, two, three plus if I want to, oh, and I, right. If I was going to play a card to beat them, we do have the money. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to mess around. I, although I could, oh, interestingly, I could play myself for the reinforcement because then that means I'd get three more. 
So how about I play this, because it's not going to cost me anything. So I've got three plus three, so we're at six versus four. But if he draws a three or a four, chances are he won't, though. It's a four. Come on! So I just... I just got hit. Ah, uh, so if I had played the four, then I still wouldn't have won. Oh my gosh! What are the chances? His one, two, three, four plus a four versus my three plus three. Yeah, so I just took a hit. So I'm gonna lose a troop because my troops won't fall into fear. Uh, we will get a coin for losing that troop at least for putting that back on the board. And now I've got to retreat to a friendly location. I guess I'll just retreat over here to River Run with my new buddies. All right, but we're going to move back in, and we're going to take you out, pal. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. Because it could have been... Oh, it, I guess it could have been a five. Or it could have been... Okay, that's what I was looking for. Something a little bit more normal instead of just crazy luck. So, and meanwhile, the Targaryens are going to fight, etc., etc. I could keep going, folks, but I think I'm going to stop right there. Because that should give you a pretty good idea of the overall flow of Game of Thrones, Ice and Fire. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about this and the competitive game plus the solo mode, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.